So Louis Chua, both cards, please. Chairman, on the topic of enhancing CPF returns, I would like to once again take the chance to raise concerns that have previously voiced out in Parliament in the past two years. The CPF scheme plays an important role in securing Singaporeans' retirement needs, and it is, after all, the Board's mission. An opportunity to enhance these returns is therefore something which many Singaporeans continuously look out for. The long lines at the banks recently due to the promotional fixed deposit rates is evidence enough of this demand. In the past month alone, major banks such as OCBC and DBS have begun offering additional products for investors to allocate their CPF ordinary account monies to. OCBC is now offering eight-month deposits at an interest rate of 3.88%, while DBS now accepts online applications for T-bill investments using CPF OA funds. Again, the long lines forming suggest that Singaporeans' need for higher quality returns to their OA funds is largely unmet. The excess demand for these additional OA investment products, despite their ra rather modest long-term returns, as compared to a globally diversified portfolio of ETFs, for example, further shows that there is pent-up demand for more investment options that need to be satiated. In Budget 21 and 22, I sought clarification on the CPF Lifetime Retirement Investment Scheme, LRIS. Last year, I asked if the Expert Investment Council has completed their studies and if the government was still considering rolling out the LRIS. Minister Dr Tan Si Leng assured us that the government is still evaluating the scheme and I would like to once again check in if there has been any conclusion on the study since then. It is, after all, close to seven years since August 2016 when the plans were first announced. Is there a more concrete timetable on which the Ministry can share details of the proposed LRRS? I hope the Ministry is cognizant that the longer the delay, the higher the opportunity costs and real costs to Singaporeans' retirement savings. Moreover, I would like to reiterate the lack of options currently available to Singaporeans to allow them to take better control of the wealth they have. Since my speech last year, there are still only six ETFs available for Singaporeans to invest in. With increasing financial literacy among our people, they should be empowered to take greater charge of their investment decisions according to their risk appetites and financial goals. Next. The CPF Board's vision is, among others, to enable Singaporeans to have a secure retirement through lifelong income. It is imperative that, therefore, we consistently review and revise, where necessary, the mechanisms that underlie its functions to ensure that it serves its purpose as effectively as possible. One of the key concerns frustrating Singaporeans now is inflation. I understand that the liquidity of ordinary accounts packed them to shorter-term interest rates. However, for much of our working lives, the bulk of our CPF contributions gets allocated towards the OA. I appreciate the interest rate flaw that has been put in place at 2.5%. However, we must balance CPF OA rates against the goal of preserving the purchasing power of our retirement funds and guarding against inflation over time. While CPF monies are invested in special SGS fully guaranteed by the government, GIC's portfolio has been able to beat inflation both nominally and in real terms at 7% and 4.2% returns respectively over the past 20 years. Pegging away interest rates to the deposit rate has its issues as they can be quite arbitrary. For example, DBS states that the 12-month fixed deposit rates for deposits up to 19999 is 3.2%, while an amount of $20,000, which is used for OA calculations, drops to 0.05% instead. We are beginning to see a stark contrast in rates. Recent news articles shows banks competing with one another to get deposits. UOB has even raised its maximum bonus rates from 3.6% to 7.8%, while many now offer fixed deposit rates of 3 to 4%. Despite this, the CPF Board's assessment of major local banks' interest rates to be at 0.52% for the period from November 22 to January 23, and one cannot help but feel as though these are unrealistically suppressed given the realities of the deposit environment of the local banks today. Chairman, the OA formula itself has remained unchanged since 1999. Many of us now have the likes of a DBS multiplier or UOB1 account where higher interest rates can be earned easily as compared to historical savings accounts. Even if the government does not wish to take inflation into account, I urge the government to reconsider the formula after 24 years to take into account the current nature of fixed deposits and savings rates from the three local banks so that it better reflects economic realities.